Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India are um, looking at the different uh, efficiency and performance uh, parameter and uh, we have looked at uh, all this uh, propulsion efficiency, thermal efficiency, propeller efficiency and the overall efficiency for turbojet. Now the same thing we are going to look at how it uh, varies for turbofan engine. Now for turbofan uh, we are going to derive those uh, similar expression. Uh, like um, so the parameters can be for turbofan ok. So, here uh, as we recall the engine has two sections just uh, uh, getting it uh, and uh, uh, just to recall that. So, then you have compressor, then finally it goes through that. So, these are hot exhaust, these are coal exhaust, this is U. So, there are two contributing factors, one is the coal thrust, other one is the hot thrust. So, they contribute to each other and they both of them actually the total thrust component of the cooled and the hot. So, here the thermal efficiency could be uh, like m dot e h into u e h square by 2 plus m dot e c square by 2 minus u square by 2. So, where m dot a is m dot a c plus m dot a h and we have m dot e h equals to m dot a h plus m dot e f and m dot a c is m dot e c. So, f would be m dot f by m dot a h. So, we can just write this one 1 plus f square plus m dot a c by m dot a h minus 1 plus u square 2 f q r. Now, similarly the propulsion efficiency which is T u by m dot e h u h square by 2 plus square by 2 minus m dot a u square by 2, which we can again simplify like 1 plus f minus u plus a c by m dot a h minus u into u divided by u square by 2 plus a c by m dot a h minus 1 plus m dot a c by m dot 
So, we can have the propulsion efficiency and thermal efficiency in this fashion. Now, we can look at the curve like how let us say if we draw it with the air speed and this side propulsive efficiency then we have curve like so curve goes like that this is pure turbo jet then we have this then we have this then we can have this is turbo prop this is low bypass this is high bypass turbofan so that gives you an idea how propulsion efficiency with the air speed that varies so if you take an uh, lower air speed then you can see that is what we have been always uh, talking that at the low speed application turbo propeller engine is quite effective you can see the propulsive efficiency is the maximum. But as we increase the air speed this side then obviously the propulsion efficiency of the turbo prop engine drops but at the same time we have the turbo fan and turbo jets their efficiency goes up propulsion efficiency. So, another curve which may be interesting to just note again this is with air speed and this is propulsion efficiency. So, this is for like and this is for propeller fan and this is contra rotating fan. So, even their uh, propulsive efficiency can be compared how these things actually varies. Now, what we can look at is the with this kind of efficiency and other parameters. So, we can really go to uh, some particular trend. So, uh, these are the some of the pictures which are give you an idea like how this uh, different kind of engines and what is there. So, let us look at this first picture. So, this is the core thermal efficiency versus propulsion into transmission efficiency and you see this the old Whittle engine where they belong and this side is the overall efficiency and this also SFC. So, this is where our turbo jet then low bypass ratio turbo fan then current bypass ratio turbo fans which are there then we have future trend how things are going to be uh, advanced in this direction. And other one which is there is the depending on the bypass ratio this is the different factors of the bypass ratio and this is the fuel consumption rate or TSFC thrust specific fuel consumption. This is where turbo jet lies you see quite top then turbo fan with bypass ratio 1 then low bypass ratio you have medium bypass ratio, then high bypass ratio, turbo propeller and these are the different example of all these uh, different category of engines 
where they belong and how they are performance parameters, which as I just try to draw schematically. Now, the another curve which would be interesting to see is the specific thrust characteristics, where again this is the aircraft Mach number and you can see how the trend looks like. The trend is you have turboprop here, then you go to high bypass ratio turbofan, this is low bypass ratio turbofan and there is where that turbo jet belongs to and that is the one which finally takes to the TSFC characteristics that is uh, your specific fuel consumption rate with the aircraft Mach number. Again this bottom curve is turbo prop, then you have high bypass ratio turbo fan, then you have low bypass ratio turbo fan, how that is ch changing and in, in between there, there is a small deviation for the turbo prop which is the conventional propeller engine and this is where the turbo jet. So, the interesting thing to note here, let us say given a Mach number, if it is low subsonic range, let us say we come here, the TSFC is quite high for turbo jet and then low bypass ratio and turbo fan, but when I go to high Mach number, then you can see this is what that is why low speed application turbo prop is preferred and high speed application bypass ratio turbo fan these are preferred and at the same time the other curves also kicks in. Now that will give you an some idea about how these trends and are. Now moving forward the important one is that we look at the take off thrust. Now, this is another important factor that actually affects the performance. So, this is as I said one of the most important characteristics, one of the most important characteristics of a gas turbine engine or of a turbine engine installed in aircraft. So, it can provide static or low speed thrust, ramjet cannot. So, this is this take off thrust is very very important because uh, this can be only produced when we have this combination of compressor and turbine and such that, but it can provide static or low speed thrust. So, ramjet engine cannot do that. So, that is important restriction for ramjet engine. Now, any aircraft can take off under its own power. So, that is which is essential requirement and at the same time during take off aircraft needs the max power during take off. So, also this is important that uh, take off thrust is going to be the maximum thrust because this required during take off and the take off usually happens at the sea level where air density is also maximum at 
ground level and that leads to higher drag because this is proportional to density. So, the aircraft has to also overcome frictional forces on the wheel. So, it has to overcome frictional forces on wheel also full load with maximum fuel. So, that means the load is full, full load with max fuel. That means, while the aircraft is taking off that time you have the maximum payload carrying including the fuel weight which is also maximum. So, this is a very, very important design parameter because this is the max thrust generated by an engine and that is what required during takeoff. Now, how that makes things different or how it affect? Let us see, it is simple we will start with the let us say thrust equation. So, that is T equals to m dot a minus u plus p a a e. Now, what happens at start up u goes to 0 or u is very very smaller than u e. So, which will lead to m would be quite small and that means, p e what is there that should be p a that means, the atmospheric condition. So, with these conditions one can write the thrust which is going to be during takeoff it is equals to m dot a into 1 plus f u e and always we keep on saying so far rather instead uh, that in general uh, f is very very small, but one can always say why or one can look at it just uh, just to justify that statement which we have been always talking that fuel air ratio um, would be always less. Um, uh, let us say any hydrocarbon fuel you take, let us uh, take the simple one uh, typically methane. So, what happens just look at the methyl combustion. Uh, so, this is 2 O 2 plus N 2 which will lead to C O 2 H 2 plus 7 N 2. So, that is sort of an balanced equation. Then uh, here fuel is 16 and if you look at this year which is uh, this is 7 into 28 plus this is 2 into 32, this would be roughly 260. Now, the fuel wear ratio would be 16 by 260, which is 0 0.06. And that is what we always say in general, these engines the fuel wear ratio is quite small. And just an example, now you can take the other fuels like all these jet fuels or uh, things are all hydrocarbon fuels which are of the similar um, category and you can have this. Now, let us coming back to this take off thrust if um, since f is small we can uh, write take off thrust is m dot a into u a which means t 
CO by m dot A is U e, which is the static thrust per unit mass. Okay. Now, this uh, static thrust per unit mass, this guy is directly proportional to exit or exhaust velocity. Okay. That is what we can see, but it would be interesting to also look at for a given flow rate how does thrust depend on exhaust velocity. So, that would give us a important aspect or this answer also this will also or this answer to this question also shed some light that one of the major differences between turbo jets and turbo fan etcetera. So, this uh, plays a significant role in the choice of propulsion system for specific application that means, this guy plays a significant role in the choice of propulsion system for a specific application. Let us see how that happens. So, we have already derived the uh, relationship for the thermal efficiency and the thermal efficiency is 1 plus f minus u square by 2 by f into q r. Now, for static engine u goes to 0 or u is very very smaller than u e and at the same time we have f is smaller than 1. Then we can write this thermal efficiency as u e square by 2 f q r which is equivalent to writing m a u e square to m dot q r. Now, from here what we get that m dot a to m dot f eta thermal efficiency q r divided by u e square. And also we know thrust is m dot a that take off thrust that we have got m dot a which is the take off thrust essentially u e. So, we can write this is 2 m dot f eta thermal by q r into u e. So, this is what a important finding. So, this one can say this thrust is here we mean to say that take off thrust here. So, this is here it is take off thrust. Now, 
what we can see for a given fuel flow rate and thermal efficiency, this takeoff thrust would be inversely proportional to U e. And we have seen thrust is also proportional to m dot a. So, which clearly says that for a given rate of energy consumption, the take up thrust can be increased by accelerating a longer mass flow of air to a smaller exit velocity. So, this is very important that for a given rate of energy consumption, the takeoff thrust can be increased by accelerating a longer mass flow rate of air to a smaller exit velocity. That means, if you clap these two clause together, either we can increase m dot a, once we do that uh, takeoff thrust could be increased, but uh, or we can uh, so with the larger mass flow rate and smaller exit velocity. That means, when the engine is starting off during taking off the aircraft, this guy may be small, but with larger mass flow rate it can be increased, the takeoff thrust can be higher. And m dot a for turbo fans are greater than that of turbojet. So, now you can see why this uh, recent developments is uh, is a pretty much a common choice of using turbofan engines, but this can provide higher takeoff thrust. But U e is higher or it much higher for turbojet. Now, combining this one can think about this takeoff thrust for turbo fan and turbo prop are much higher that is compared to turbo jet. So, that is why you can see why as I said turbofan engines are preferred. So, they are widely used in big civilian airplanes because they provide higher takeoff thrust to take off with larger weight and that is one of the primary reason why these days all the development which are uh, one can see even when you have seen the recent uh, development and the kind of engines what we have discussed during the uh, introduction or introductory lecture, this turbofan is more and more popular, but with a different blends of turbo, I mean different blends of bypass ratio. Sometimes it is a low bypass ratio, sometimes it is a high bypass ratio, it depends on the application, depends on the user choice. 
So, that is how the development is going on and turbo fan is more and more popular or gaining popularity or rather used in the recent developments. So, we will uh, look at the other aspect in the next lecture.